All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I am on the way to the junkyard to pull a bell housing that I couldn't get last time I went because I didn't have the right tool. And I'm also gonna get a couple other things, probably a brake master cylinder from, uh, there's a 330 there, that way I can delete my ABS system. Like I had talked about in the first video I made, and then I think I'm gonna get another truck manifold. That way I can make my exhaust after I finish the wiring, which is what we're gonna be starting with on this video. I wanna talk about the ECU I chose and then also why I chose it. I went with a micro squirt opposed to people usually using the GM ECU that comes with their long block or whatever. So the reason why I went with the micro squirt, one, it is super compact. Two, very powerful software that you can get for free actually. Unlike HP tuners where you have to pay like, I think it's 300 or 400 dollars just for the interface piece and then a hundred dollars per ECU to tune. I had actually thought about biting the bullet and paying for HP tuners and trying to learn how to tune on HP tuners. However, the uh, tuning software is only available for Windows, and I use a Mac, and I will never, probably couldn't pay me to use a Windows unless it's for gaming. So, I opted to go with the Micro Squirt. Um, Holly's another option, but this is a budget build, and I didn't want to spend $1,000, even though it is a very good system. I would recommend that if you have the money. So, like I said, the software is free, and you can pay, I think it's 50 bucks or something to register it. And that actually gets you an auto-tune feature, kind of like the Holly. I don't know how well it works in comparison. That and the relay box will fit in the stock DME box in the E46. So I can keep it away from the elements even though it's waterproof. Both things are waterproof. And it came with an eight foot lead of wiring um, for all the sensors and everything so I'll have pretty much a new harness other than the uh, pigtails that I took from the original that came with my engine so yeah I mean I'm excited to show you guys how it works and how to wire it up and then give you some tips and tricks all along the way and hopefully we get a first start here soon started on this already. Um, I'm going to put a wiring diagram of what I'm going off of in the description below. But pretty much what it has here is there's a fuel pump trigger going from the ECU harness. What's called a F idle, which is just an extra output. Um, usually for an idle air controller, but you don't need one with the micro squirt. So we're going to use it to turn on the cooling fans on the radiator. And then I've got a 12 volt constant, or not 12 volt constant, 12 volt switch that goes to the ECU to power the ECU. And that comes from the relays and the fuses. These right here that I have all crimped together are constant power, which are gonna to go to the car, to the battery, that's always gonna have power. The only ones I have left are a ground for one of these fuel pump, or for one of these relays, and then a switch source that goes to the car, so when I turn the key, it'll turn all the relays on. And then I have my fuel pump wire, and then one of the wires that goes to the fans when they're activated by the ECU. I'm going to link this relay box in the description. I actually like this a lot more than what people usually use with like the Dorman 4 fuse block and then the two little uh, relay terminals. I just got this from Amazon. I think it was about 12 bucks or so. You're going to want one of these. Um, a set of relays. I bought a five pack, but I'm only using three of them. You're going to 
want some of these crimps. I highly advise using crimps, especially in the engine compartment. It's optional, you can solder some things. Um, it's mostly personal preference. Then you're gonna want something to cut wires to cut them down smaller. And then I've got a set of clippers that are made for these terminals. These are what we call like wing terminals. I don't know if you can see those on there, but they crimp down and hold the wire and the sleeve for the wire. I have a link for these from Amazon also. I think they're like $10, $12 also. These are wire strippers. They self-adjust and these I just got from Harbor Freight. There's probably better ones out there, but these work for me. So let's see. A lot of this I'm using leftover wire. So this, this green and this purple and this red were eight feet like the rest of the one. But I don't need them to go that far because the ECU and the relay box are going to be in the E46's stock DME box right next to each other. And the connections that need to be made to this relay box are going to be in there as well. So it's going to be really simple. So these, they come connected. These are for the fuse blocks in here. They come connected um, as four. So I kept three of them connected so that when this gets power, all three of these fuses get power and those will power the um, injectors, coils, uh, O2 sensor, stuff like that. If you don't know how a relay works, pretty much one side is a coil and the other side is a switch. If, when you put power to the coil side, it turns on the switch and then that sends power through to whatever you need to power on. Mostly for high current things like fans, your fuel pump, stuff like that. So right now I'm gonna show you how I use the crimpers to put a wire on the terminal for the relay. And with this wire, I'm gonna do the 12 volt switch that's gonna go from the car. So whenever I turn the key on the car, it'll turn the relays on. And I'm just gonna use an extra wire that I have from the mega squirt that I cut out that I didn't need. In keeping with the GM theme, I'm gonna use this pink. You just need to kind of educate, make an educated guess on how long you need it. I'm gonna go about the same as this because these are gonna go, these connections are gonna be made in the DME box as well. And I'm gonna show you how to find those and everything too when we get in there. So, let's see. From here, down to about here would be give about an extra quarter inch or half an inch or so. So we'll cut it. Strip the side about a quarter inch. See how easy that is? And then this is the one that goes into the relay. So what I find easiest is to find the right jaws for the size that you're doing, the wire. Put the crimp, or yeah, put the crimp in the jaws to start it, and then just put the wire through the back. That way you don't have to hold too much at once. So just insert that, make sure it is past the wings there, and then press. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's pretty tight. And then for the second one, this one's going to crimp into the wire itself. size up or the same one for that one since the sleeve makes the wire a little bit bigger. There we go. That's 
all done, find the correct terminal. So this one right here is my main relay. And this side's gonna be ground, and this side's gonna be the um, going from the switch in the car. Just press it in, and it should click. There we go. Now this side should be ready to go, and you'll just splice it in with one of these connectors in the car. And like I said, I'll show you how to find which wires go to what when we get there. So I'm going to finish this, and then we will see you back on the next clip. Engine is in the car. For the micro squirt, you only need TPS, coolant sensor, your injectors, and your coil packs, obviously. And then a map sensor, your crank signal, and a IAT or MAT. I put it in the manifold because it was easier. And that should get it to start and run. You don't need knock sensors or the uh, cam position sensor. The ECU gets all the rest of the information. And you don't need an IAC also, it's optional. Um, I didn't want to deal with it, so I didn't grab one of those uh, controllers. But yeah, I'm gonna get this wiring started and then hopefully we can get it get a first start. This is where the harness or the computer and the um, relay box is gonna sit in the old DME box. And this eight foot harness is so long, like you can probably get away with a 30 inch in one of these cars unless you wanna put this in, put the computer inside the car. I put the engine in here just so I can get a feel for where the wire lengths need to be. I'll probably take the engine out and actually do this on the stand. So yeah, fun times. I'll probably start to work in this off camera and then um, show you how I, how it looks after. All right guys, that's gonna be the last bit of this video. On the next episode, I'm going to work more on the wiring harness, getting it connected to the chassis, and then we're going to get it looking nice and clean. And I'm probably gonna try and show you how to find the connections um, with like a multimeter. If you want to ask any kind of questions on the swap in general, leave me a comment or hit up my social media on like Instagram. But anyway, if you like this content, subscribe, give me a like, comment if you have any questions, hit the bell if you want to get notifications, and I'll see you in the next one.